Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. What I'm going to be talking about in this video really just concerns Mac users. So if you're a Windows user, you may just want to bow out now because nothing I'm going to be talking about will be applicable to you and a Windows system. Now, what I want to talk about is SetApp. Um, well over a year ago, I did one single video on SetApp. And what SetApp is, is it's a service that you subscribe to and the most popular plan is $10 a month. And for $10 a month, you get access to over 188 different Mac apps, fully working apps, not crippled in any way. You could theoretically download and install all 188 Mac apps on your system and they'll be working as long as you have your subscription active. Now they're adding apps to it all the time. When I first started with it, I think there was around 138 or 140. Now, as I mentioned, there's 188 as I speak. And that video I did over a year ago, I was kind of showcasing the few uh, photography apps that are in set app. And I mentioned that I'd be doing follow-up videos on some of the photography apps that are included with a setup uh, a membership. Unfortunately, I never did any other videos. I just did that single video talking about setup. So in this video, I wanna talk about at least one photography application that is in setup. Now, when you install setup on your system, it sits up here in the menu bar and you could uh, go to the main screen of setup and search for your app and install it from here. And if I just search for photography, uh, you see that there's a number of different photography apps included. There's one called Emulsion, Luminar Flex is included, Camera Bag Pro, Photo Lemur, and Glue Motion are all considered photographic apps or apps on photography. And what I want to demo today is Camera Bag Pro. That's a pretty popular app um, on its own, not just in set app. So we're going to open that. And by the way, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to uh, SetApp, and you could check them out uh, for yourself. Now, uh, when you open it, we're, it's prompting you to load an image. So I'm just going to click right on Load. And I have a RAW file sitting on my uh, desktop. It's a Nikon RAW file. And we'll load that in there. And you can see, loads fine. Now. Over on the right hand side is where you have all your controls and adjustments. You have actually two tabs. Uh, by default, it's going to open up in the adjustments tab, but to the far right, you can see there's presets and it comes with a number of different presets. And if you just hover over a preset, it will give you a preview in the top right hand side of the viewer. And you could see all those different types of black and white um, presets. There's all these different types of like um, camera type presets and so on. Now, if you want to view them all at one time, you could just click on click on quick look and you'll get them all viewed right here. And you could just select one and it will apply that preset uh, to your image. And you can see there's a bunch of them, but we're not going to talk about presets in this specific video. We're going to talk about the actual adjustments. Now, first of all, I think it's just very slightly crooked. So we'll go to crop and straighten. And I'll go to this straight and slider down here at the bottom. And actually, it's a lot straighter than I thought it was. As I look at the guidelines, it actually is straight. It must have just been an optical illusion. So I'll click Done. Uh, there's nothing I really need to spot heal, but in my limited experience using the spot heal tool, um, it works great. Uh, so that is fine. Now we have basic adjustments. Includes auto exposure, exposure, contrast, saturation. My workflow is such in just about any application, I jump all around and uh, using Camera Bag Pro, I'm no different. So I wouldn't start with basics. I like doing um, shadows and highlights first. So I'll go to advanced light and then I'll go to shadows and highlights. And when I click on it, you'll notice it adds a little shadows and highlights. I'm gonna call it a module down here at the bottom. And the controls are at the top. You can see we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So to begin with, I'd like to start with the midtones and I'll just open those up and I'll open up the shadows a little bit and I'll bring down the highlights just a tad. 
So you could see three uh, controls right there. We also had what method do you want to use? Do you want to use a value method, a lightness method? And you could see if you just hover over the different methods, it'll give you the look of what it's doing. I'll stay with that value method. And on the little module itself, we have a little on off switch. So if you want to see like a before you did anything to that module and after, and little X there, you could just remove it. So you, if you don't like what you did, you could just delete it. Now, from this point, then I'll jump back up to basics and I'll go to contrast. And you could see it added the contrast module right there. And I'll add some contrast. You can see with just two controls, uh, two modules, it did quite a bit already. Uh, so from this point here, I think I, will, I like the white balance. And if we just take a quick look, you can see that there's a lot of different um, controls here. Uh, if we go here, let's close some of these down. I'll go to advanced color next. And uh, here I want to go to hue exposure. So what that means is um, it's going to take a specific color and you're going to affect the exposure of that color. Hue shift takes a uh, specific color and it will shift the color to a different color. And hue saturation takes a specific color and increases or decreases the saturation of that color. Now I want to go to hue exposure and you can see it adds that hue exposure module. And now we have this hue region and then you could see that uh, we have across here this line and we have five little dots on that line. One at the far left, one there, one there, one there, one there. Those are over specific ranges of colors. And what I want to do is I want to darken that blue sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go to the hue region and move it to the right so that blue is directly under this uh, little dot. And then I'll take that dot and I'll pull it down. I could push around. You can see how it's darkening the blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the yellow area and I'll make the yellows a little brighter. And I'll go to the green area right here. Gonna make those a little darker. So we'll see a before after that adjustment, the U exposure. There's before and there's after. Before after. You could see that as I was doing it, it didn't look like it was doing much, but in total it did a lot. Now if I think that's a little bit too heavy, what I could do go is to the amount slider and I could just adjust the amount a little bit, dial it down a touch, and I think I will. So as we go through, you could see that there's all these different advanced color, and again I'm going to call them modules. I'm not exactly sure what Camera Bag Pro specifically calls them. So photographic, we have vignette, grain, sharpen, blur, uh, let's go to sharpen a little bit. I'll sharpen it slightly. Just a little bit. And um, we'll go to vignette. And when I added vignette, it actually put a dark vignette on it at full 100% amount. So we're going to back that right off. If I go the other way, you'll get a lighter white vignette. So I'll just... Uh, Kind of a subtle, more of a subtle vignette like that. I think that works for me. And if we go through some more, we have some different masks. We have U mask, uh, HSV mask, luminance masks. We have borders. You could put a basic border, a fill border, an image border on your image. Then we have some utilities. You could put a water watermark. If you have any de dead pixels, you could fix the dead pixels. You could add a LUT uh, to the image if you're into LUTs. Uh, you could uh, affect the aspect ratio. That's obviously if you're going to be printing it to specific size paper. Um, you could get the exact size, maximum size, all that in the utility. So you can see there's like a lot of different controls here. Uh, and if we do a before after, if I go over the far left, there's a little uh, like power switch. And if I click on that, there's before and click on it again, there's after. There's before, there's after. So you could see I did really full processing on this image in Camera Bag Pro. Now when I'm done with it, and then let's say I want to share it with the world, we're going to export it. So I'll go up to uh, File, and we would go to Save As. And when we go to Save As, uh, you have the option of changing the size. Let's just leave it maximum size. And you can save it as a JPEG, a PNG, a TIFF, a PNG 16, or a TIFF 16. Those are 16-bit files. I'll just save it to a JPEG image. Quality, I'll just put it at 100. Usually with quality, uh, people can't visually see the difference on a computer screen uh, if it's around 80 to 100. You're not going to see the difference. 
Once it starts going uh, below 80, then you might start to see the difference. The lower quality use the smaller file it will create. Uh, the higher quality will be a larger file. So I'll click Save. And then it's going to ask me where, and I'll just save it. I'll expand that out, and we'll save it to my desktop. And I'll call it. That, is, that uh, building is called Marcy Casino. And we'll save it to the desktop. And we'll just save it. So it's saving that image uh, now and processed, and we're done. So that's it. Just I had promised over a year ago when I did that single video introducing everyone to Setapp, I had promised that I would demo some of the photography applications that are in Setapp, and I apologize that I never did. So I just wanted to show you one. Uh, Setapp has a seven day free trial. Check it out see if there's applications in there that you would use specifically for me if i go over to all apps um, the main reason i like it is clean my mac that is an application i've used um, since i started using Mac several years ago and they come out with a new version every year and i think it's around 99 bucks or 109 dollars or something like that and i'd have to buy the new version every year because they would stop work like when apple would come out with a new operating system all of a sudden the older version of clean my mac would stop working and you'd have to upgrade well now you always get the latest version and um when they come out with a new version you'll automatically get it so uh, that is the main reason why i liked and started using set app but there's a lot of stuff here um, there's a lot of different applications I do use uh, that I found that um, come in handy. And I'm sure that there would be a lot of applications uh, you would find wor uh, worth it to you as well. And I mentioned, again, the pricing. Uh, the main um, monthly is $10 a month, and you get every single app, as I mentioned. If you pay annually, you'll save $12 a year. And if you have a family, you could get it on four different computers uh, for $20 a month. So that's it. That's Setup and Camera Bag Pro. Pro. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>